Nature has been adapting itself to overcome challenges for billions of years. Now, scientists study nature for solutions for space travel. One new Calgary instructor involves her students in these design challenges. Can you tell us about biomimicry? It's an approach to design where you look for good ideas in nature, uh, look at nature's forms, nature's systems, nature's processes, and you try to abstract that into good design for engineering or for architecture or other fields. How is biomimicry used in space? So one of the most famous examples is Velcro. Um, when we first went to the moon, the gloves that the astronauts wore had Velcro in them. Sea monkeys uh, are also known as brine shrimp. They were first studied in the Apollo 16 and 17 missions in 1972. And the astronauts took up brine shrimp cysts or eggs and placed them between layers um, with plant seeds and bacteria. And then there was some material that was testing whether cosmic rays were getting through uh, these different kind of samples. Uh, so the brine shrimp or the sea monkeys uh, prove to be um, pretty much immune to cosmic rays because they can stay in a dormant state. Uh, so they can completely dehydrate. Uh, their cells turn into sugars, which is why they can basically stay in one piece. What kind of designs could be inspired by brine shrimp? What people are most interested in is the dormant state uh, that they can go into. Designs that can come from that uh, is ways to uh, preserve vaccines, for instance. So rather than refrigerating vaccines, uh, putting them into that uh, dehydrated state, transporting them, then adding water upon arrival. What is the NASA Vine project? So NASA Vine is a virtual institute of nature-inspired exploration. Uh, it's a group of professionals, um, researchers, students, educators uh, who are looking to nature for solutions to problems that people might have uh, going to space. So VINE consists of about eight uh, research clusters and uh, people with various skills and research interests uh, have joined these clusters. In the clusters, people do research, uh, work together on tangible projects and report out annually some of the clusters are looking at materials uh, in space, in space propulsion, persistence of life in space, education and communication. So how do you get your students involved? So I get my students involved by providing projects where they look at uh, challenges that NASA or any other space agency might have and then the students look to nature for solutions to some of those challenges. 